Hello everyone, welcome to my new video in my Mathematics Essential series. In this video I want to discuss the sine, cosine, and tangent of obtuse angles. And it turns out that extending the definition of sine, cosine, and tangent so that we can take the sine, cosine, and tangent of obtuse angles really just implicitly follows from some of the work we've done in previous videos on the unit circle. Okay, and I just wanted to explicitly cover it because in upcoming videos I'm going to discuss the sine rule and the cosine rule, also known as the law of sines and the law of cosines. And those formulas are useful for uh, working with triangles that are not right angle triangles. So some of those triangles are going to obtain obtuse angles. Now, we know that our three basic trigonometric ratios that inhere in any right angle triangle, okay, I've written them out here, we know that we can equivalently think of those definitions as coming from uh, the components in some point on the circumference of a unit circle. So for any point on the circumference of the unit circle, for example, P, uh, if you just take the P that I've labeled on this unit circle in red, Okay, it's going to have an x and a y component, and x is going to be equal to the cosine of theta, y is going to be equal to the sine of theta, where theta is the angle uh, measured, or the angle measured uh, counterclockwise from the positive x-axis, okay, between the positive x-axis and the line drawn from the origin to the point P, okay? And then from this, you go on to define uh, the tangent of theta, which is just the sine of theta over the cosine of theta, or equivalently, y over x, okay? <clears throat> So it might seem like you know we're always taking the sine and the cosine and the tangent of acute angles, angles that are less than 90 degrees or less than pi over two radians. But if you consider, and this is something we've done in a previous video, but I didn't explicitly mention that it defines the trigonomet trigonometric ratios for obtuse angles. Okay, this point P has a y component. Okay, and we can see that there's going to be a corresponding point Q on the unit circle that has the same y component as the point P. So I've indicated it in green. So that's Q, all right? Now, we can see that the X component of Q is just going to be negative whatever the X component of P is. Okay, so given that the X component of P is the cosine of theta, the X component of Q is going to be negative cosine of theta, and the Y component is going to remain unchanged. Okay, that will just be the sine of theta, okay? But you can also see that this point Q defines a right angle triangle just like the point P does, and I will draw it in here. Okay, so there's another right angle triangle inscribed inside the unit circle. And you can see that that unit circle must be symmetric to the unit circle defined by the point P. So this angle here is also theta, but it's measured from the negative axis and measured clockwise. All right, and the triangles must be symmetric because it's a unit circle. So the radius is constant in any circle, and given that the radius is one, both triangles will have a hypotenuse of length one. You can see that their height is the same, and the height is just the y components of the points P and Q. And given that the x components are just the negatives of each other, they have the same magnitude. So these triangles must be symmetric. All right, but the point Q also defines another angle, or the line we draw between the origin and the point Q also defines another angle, and that's the angle measured counterclockwise from the positive x-axis, which I'm doing, drawing in green. Okay, and let's just call that angle phi. Okay, now phi is obviously an obtuse angle. It's greater than 90 degrees. So we must have that Q is also equal, or also has these components, all right, cosine of phi and the sine of phi, all right? So now you can see that the cosine of some obtuse angle phi is equal to the negative cosine of some other acute angle theta, and the sine of some obtuse angle phi is equal to the sine of some acute angle theta. So really, to extend the definition of these trigonometric ratios so that we can use them to take the sine and the cosine and the tangent of obtuse angles it really just comes down to uh, identifying their identity with the sine and the cosine of some ac acute angle. We also know that phi must be equal to 180 degrees minus theta, or in radians, pi minus theta. All right, so I'll just write that here. Phi equals, I'll work in radians, okay, pi minus theta. All right, and just writing out what we've concluded, we have that the uh, cosine of phi is equal to negative the cosine of theta, and the sine of this obtuse angle phi is just equal to the sine of some other acute angle theta. Okay, so the cosine of some obtuse angle is always equal to negative one times the cosine of some other acute angle, and the sine of some obtuse angle is always equal to the sine of some other acute angle. Okay, and given that we know what phi is, all right, we can also write the following, that the cosine of phi is equal to the cosine of, well, what's phi? We found that it was pi 
minus theta or in degrees, 180 minus theta. And that the sine of phi is equal to the sine of pi minus theta. OK, so those are two ways we could express the cosine and the sine of some obtuse angle in terms of the sine and the cosine of some other acute angle. OK, and naturally, it follows that this also defines the tangent of some obtuse angle. So given that the tangent of phi is equal to the sine of phi divided by the cosine of phi, well, we know that the sine of phi and the cosine of phi can be expressed in terms of acute angles, so this definition is fine. OK, so if you enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a like. Feel free to share it with your friends. Uh, if you want a notification when I upload a new video, subscribe to my channel. And if anything's confusing, just post a question in the comments. In the next video, I'm going to introduce the sine rule and the cosine rule, and I will prove one of them. I'll make a video for proving each of them, and I'll do some examples. Until next time, bye for now.